This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly realms, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive as I'm taught the Word of God. My life has changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have a Bible, let's go to John chapter 9. And the message last Sunday was of such a length that we dealt with the healing, but not the repercussions. So this morning, we're going to be dealing with the repercussions of the healing of the man born blind from John chapter 9. And the title this morning is The Greatest Miracle. We are still in the series, What Did Jesus Really Say? The Greatest Miracle. John chapter 9. And because I am pressed for time, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to give commentary on the passage as we work our way through it. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? We pointed out last Sunday that man is always looking to blame. Jesus didn't spend any time blaming. Jesus is not a blamer. Jesus is a problem solver. But man looks to blame. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. Not whatever pool you want to wash in. Not whatever pool is convenient to you on your way home. Not whatever pool you think is the cleanest. The pool of Siloam. This word means sense. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. See, everybody wants the miracle, but they don't want to obey. Let me run that by again. Everybody wants the miracle, but they don't want to obey. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging ask, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? So think about it. He was a beggar because he was blind. So Jesus, in healing the man, not only solved his physical problem, he solved his financial problem. Because now that he was no longer blind, well, he could go get a job. Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened? They had demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see, you know, just like ABC. He heard, he believed, he went and did, and he got his miracle. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Verse 13, they brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had been blind, Now, the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Now, somebody may be new to the things of God and ask, why this running controversy on the Sabbath? And why did Jesus do all these miracles on the Sabbath? And the answer is obvious because the Sabbath or Saturday is when they met as Jewish people. And when they met, they would read the word. And the spirit of the Lord was on Jesus for the healing of the sick. And so he was a rabbi. He, he would be acknowledged as a guest, a guest teacher. And he would stand up and he would read the word and he would preach the word of God and signs and wonders and miracles followed. Why on the Sabbath? Because that's when they met. The word is confirmed by signs following. But of course, you know, the Pharisees wanted to pick a fight and it wasn't simply because it was the Sabbath and they weren't supposed to do work on the Sabbath. It was because here was a man that had a ministry with signs and wonders following and theirs did not. 
So at the end of the day, it was about jealousy. And then also, you know, when, when you have two or three people showing up at your deal and Jesus has five and 6,000 showing up at his deal, men plus women and children, well, that kind of can create a situation where you get criticized. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. Verse 15, see, they weren't rejoicing that a miracle had happened and that a man born blind had been healed. I mean, what kind of a, what kind of a low down disgusting dog would not rejoice that a man who had been born blind was healed and could see? They were looking for a reason to judge it. They weren't wanting to rejoice with him. They were looking for a reason to doubt it. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees in verse 16 said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He's a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. So again, these are scoffers. They weren't rejoicing that a miracle had happened and that this man who had been born blind was now able to see. They weren't rejoicing. They were looking to judge it. They wanted to find a reason to doubt it. Don't you see that nothing has changed? I said, don't you see that nothing has changed? I mean, you know, we're coming up to Christmas. Just came through Thanksgiving, coming up to Christmas. You know, if uh, you end up with fe in fellowship with people and, and they want to condemn your car or they want to condemn your house or, and you start talking about how that you came to Christ with nothing and you heard the good word and you started tithing and you started living for God and God opened up the windows of heaven and now you have all this cool stuff. A lot of people, they don't want to hear it. They, they're not looking for a reason to believe. They're looking for a reason to doubt, and they're looking for a reason to scoff. Nothing has changed. You know why? Because people haven't changed. Amen. Is this your son? They ask, is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that... Now he can see. We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. Verse 22 gives great insight. Verse 22, his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. Let me tell you something. I don't have any use or respect for any religious organization that threatens people with being put out and as a result of being put out, going to hell. I just don't have any use for it. I mean, the Roman Catholic Church has this power, they claim, and yet the very people they ought to declare it over, they don't. I mean, how in God's name can somebody like Nancy Pelosi be a, a Roman Catholic? I mean, my goodness. Rules set up to benefit the people at the top. I mean, Ted Kennedy had a wife and children and grandchildren, but because he had money, was able to apply to the Vatican and say and have a decree that his marriage was null and void in the eyes of the church so he could go marry again. Well, pardon me, I'm just a simple guy. But if I see children and grandchildren, I, I, I don't think it was a make-believe marriage. But see, somebody got money. That's all it is. And uh, cults do this. If you, look, you know, people leave all the time. I bless them in Jesus' name. What kind of a person would curse somebody leaving? Actually, truth be known, sometimes I thank God in Greyhound. <laughs> 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 
Bless them, Father God. Bless them. Bless them over there. <laughs> but I, I just, I just, I think it is an abuse of people. It is an abuse of faith to say, if you don't tow the line here, we're going to throw you out of our deal and you're not going to make heaven. I think that's abusive. Amen. 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 You know, I nearly every day now, I get up and I tell the Lord, I'm not the judge of anything. Thank God I'm not. Because, I mean, I'm, I've, been, I've been doing this ministry thing 42 years or whatever it is, 43 years. And I'm telling you, I thank God I'm not the judge. Because there are some stuff that's pretty complicated. And you know what? We don't know men's hearts. Amen. We can't hardly figure out their actions. People come to me and they say, what was he thinking? I say, I, ha I don't even know if the Holy Ghost knows what he was thinking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to venture out. But you Hispanic brothers and sisters, I salute you. Because I don't know what it is about the Hispanic culture, but these Hispanic pastors, they are control freaks. And I know that for you Hispanic brothers and sisters to be here in, at Faith Christian Center, you've probably taken some heat over it. I salute you. Now you white people, not so much. <laughs> but even think about, think about, even think about, even think about black Brothers and sisters. Because what's the criticism? What's the criticism? That I'm white. Well, you're blind and deaf. I'm not white. I have many nations on the inside of me. T.L. Osborne told me himself, you cannot produce anything other than what you are. And every Sunday, more than 60 nations of God's earth gather at Faith Christian Center. People are ridiculous. One of my great fathers in the faith, Dr. Frederick K.C. Price, I didn't care what color he was. All I cared about was the word of God that came out of his mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We live in a nation now of bullies. If you say something on social media, the, Facebook literally takes everything Patricia Heaton says about, every time Patricia Heaton uses the phrase pro-life, Facebook changes her post to anti-choice. Now, they may not do that to you, but you know, you're not Patricia Heaton. In fact, I don't even know that you know who that is. She was the star in Everybody Loves Raymond. Big pro-life person. But man, like that Gaines family, here come the hate, here come the bullies. And I'm not going to be bullied. I mean, I don't have it on me now, but I carry a 45. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be bullied. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be bullied. Amen. Amen. If people have the right to believe in Islam, which today, today, today practices slavery. Oh, I can believe anything I want to believe. Amen. 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 Just this week, I read about 20, I think it was 20 or 23,000 Nigerian women just in the last year have been kidnapped and forced into slavery by the Muslims, and the media is totally silent. Nobody talks about it. Slavery. See, everybody's all worked up about slavery 200 years ago while they give slavery in 2016 a pass. So my point is, all these bullies are hypocrites. And I don't like a bully. I grew up in Detroit. I, 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 I don't like bullies. And I learned a great lesson when I was uh, third grade. 
We, I was walking home one day. My, my, my next door neighbor, a, a young boy named Vaughn, his family moved off. His dad got a promotion. We were stuck. <laughs> and so I was walking home from school with Teddy. Teddy was worthless. <laughs> I mean, anything went wrong, he'd just go to crying. <laughs> and there was this gang. There was this gang and, and about eight kids. And they ran up and they surrounded us. And they wanted our money. I'm in third grade, and I was a year ahead. So third grade, that's what? That, I was seven. I said, I'm not going to give you my money. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. I said, I said you'll beat us up. There are more of you. And I said, besides that, all I got here is Teddy. <laughs> but I said, I'm, I, the first guy that comes at me, I'm going to break his nose. So I said, the only question left is for you, to, you guys to decide whose nose gets broken. <laughs> and they looked at each other, and they thought about it, and they looked at each other, and they, they left. And I learned a great lesson. Don't submit to bullies. Amen. 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 And the leader of that gang later became my friend. His name was Greg. I don't like bullies. I don't like people who bully other people. Amen. See, I'll try and convince you of the word of God, but I'm not going to bully anybody into anything. I don't believe in it. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not everybody who's bullied into it. Amen. Amen. You want to come, come. You want to give, give. I had a Hispanic pastor call me years ago, and, and the people are probably here in this service. In fact, I think they come at 11. They'll probably be here in the next service. They're still here. <clears throat> and he called me. How did he get my number? He called me <laughs> about so-and-so coming to our church up at I-30. I couldn't believe it. And it must have been a Monday or it must have been at some point in time where I was not really fully cognizant of who I was. Sometimes, like once up at the Ranger Stadium, somebody spilled a beer on me. And I felt this little voice, I felt somebody pulling my shirt sleeve and whispering in my ear, remember who you are. <laughs> that was Pastor Sue. <laughs> remember who you are. Somebody spilled a beer on me. So I had to stink the rest of the evening. But anyway, I, I must not have fully been cognizant of who I was. And I told this guy, I said, you must be the pastor of the littlest peanut deal in the entire Metroplex. I said, people quit me every week. I don't keep track of who's coming and going. I said, what kind of little peanut deal have you got going over there where you know every person who left you? And I said, look, brother. I said, I'm calling you brother by faith. I said, if you focus on the ones leaving, you'll always have a little itty bitty peanut deal. Why did I bring that up? T.L. Osborne walked into my office at my last house and he lifted his hands and he said, glory to God. He said, a man of God cannot think big thoughts in a little office. That's why I bring it up because you can't think great big thoughts in a little church. And you can't think great big thoughts pastored by a little pastor. <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Amen. You know what we believe in? Freedom. Amen. I said we believe in freedom. Amen. Amen. And if you haven't figured it out, this is why liberal politicians and religion cooperate. Because they're both into control. 
faith in God is not about control. Faith in God is about freedom. Whomever the Son sets free is free indeed. Verse 23, that was why his parents said he is of age. In other words, fear, fear, fear. A second time, they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God. They said, we know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know one thing I do know. I was blind, but now I see. You see, a man with a testimony is never at the mercy of a man with a theory, an opinion, an idea, or a doctrine. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? See, these were scoffers. He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? <laughs> then they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. Now, were they really disciples of Moses? No. To, uh, to act like this and talk like this? We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. So these are scoffers. These are haters. These are mockers. These are ankle biters. These are party poopers. I've made it a strict policy of my life to not hang around party poopers. Amen. Sometimes I'll tell people a testimony just to get their reaction. So be careful. If I tell you something out in the fellowship atrium, you may be thinking you're measuring me. I may be measuring you. Amen. Verse 30, the man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. Now I want you to notice in verse 31 following, this is a lost man speaking. But he had more common sense than the religious leaders. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this, they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. You know, that's not really how you win friends and influence people. <laughs> you don't build church membership by talking bad about somebody's mama. Amen. <laughs> you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Hallelujah. I remember John Osteen saying, you know, I've been thrown out of better places than this. <laughs> John 9, 35, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked him, tell me so that I may believe in him. So obviously, even after his healing, he was lost. So stop telling people they need to get right with God before you pray for them to be healed. Amen. Amen. Because if you pray for them and exercise your faith and God heals them, that'll be a sign to them. Because there's no religion. You look it up. Jonathan Shuttlesworth talks about asking the uh, Muslim cab driver, I forgot what city that was up in the Northeast, about, you know, when he prays, has he ever had an answer to prayer? And the guy said, you must be a Christian. He said, nobody expects answers to their prayers except Christians. Not Zen, not Buddhism, not Islam. There's no religion with testimonies of healing, except Christianity. Amen. Now listen to what I'm saying. There's no religion that has testimonies of miracles, except Christianity. That's why it gets opposed. You know, you could go open the city council meeting with a, a Native American Indian chant, and nobody would have any problem with it. You could quote some famous passage from Buddhism or Zen or whatever. I mean, you could, you could quote your Pilates uh, workout book and nobody would have a problem with it. But man, you start quoting that Bible or you start using that name of Jesus. And I mean, there was a chaplain just got fired for preaching from the word of God, from the Bible. Because see, if, it's, if, if whatever 
is being cited or prayed is make-believe, nobody has a problem with it. They have a problem with what is real. They have a problem with what may actually bring an answer. Because why? They're into control. Amen. And so, this guy is lost. And he gets healed. But he's still lost. He said, who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you are now, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. So this is the greatest miracle. The man born blind after he was healed by the Lord Jesus confessed Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah. Thank God for the healing. But the greatest miracle is the miracle of forgiveness and the miracle of new life in Christ. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. You see, there is a physical blindness, but there is also a spiritual blindness. And the problem is, I think that people are spiritually blind by choice. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what are we blind to? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, you, your guilt remains. In other words, they had seen what Jesus did. They, they, they not only heard with their ears the testimony of a man born blind, they had seen with their eyes. And yet they were deniers. I thank you, Father God, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. Amen. Hallelujah. See, all things are possible to him that believeth. Nothing is impossible for him who, that believes. So that's why Satan attacks faith. Because he, he wants to get you in a box physically, financially keep you there until you die and then take you to hell. That's the game. But thanks be unto God, Jesus Christ paid the price not only for us to be forgiven of our sins, but he came with healing in his wings. Glory to God. He is the God of enough and more than enough. He is the God sent from El Shaddai. He is the God who turns water into wine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this Christianity thing is not a matter of being forgiven and going to heaven. No, it is a matter of living in victory every day because Jesus made an open show and spectacle of Satan on Calvary's cross. Satan managed to bruise his heel, but Jesus on Calvary's cross crushed the head of the devil. I declare to you this morning that Satan is a defeated foe. I declare to you this morning that Satan is under your feet. Stop wrestling with the devil and get up in the morning and shout unto God with a voice of triumph and thank God that the devil is defeated and poverty is defeated and sickness is defeated and disease is defeated and that we are being led in triumphal procession in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud, I'm a victor. Victor in Christ. I am a winner. I am a winner in Christ. So we are to declare the wonders of God and what He has done in our lives. You may be here this morning and say, I don't have a testimony. Well, get busy and go get one. I saw somebody on social media talking about, you know, everything they were going through to try and extend their life. I told Sue, I said, you know, we got this thing backwards. I said, people don't lift a finger to improve their lives and then they fight like hell to keep living. Man, you got to turn that thing around. Fight like hell to live a great life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I'm at a place, glory to God. 
Sometimes I feel something in my body that could be perceived to be alarming. And I burst out laughing and I lift my hands and I say, I could care less. And then God's got to heal me. Because I'm valuable. Hallelujah. Satan wants to get you worried. When he's got you worried, he's got you in the box. Hallelujah. I declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, risen from the dead, and he rules and reigns at the right hand of God, and he liveth to make a thinner session for us. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle is the miracle of forgiveness and the miracle of new life in Christ. Let's bow our heads. You may be here this morning and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. You've never given your life to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. It says over there in Revelation that Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice... I will, and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. So it's up to us. We have been given the opportunity by God to say yes to God, say no to the devil, say yes to God, open up the door of our hearts and invite him in. If you've never done that, I want to give you the opportunity to pray that prayer with me and with the rest of us here this morning in this nine o'clock service. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. Like that man, that, like that man in John 9. He didn't know the Lord, but as soon as he had revelation that he was the anointed one of God, he became a believer. Pastor, I want to be that. I want to be like that. I want to, I want to change sides. I want to repent. I want to turn. I want to be forgiven. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up. Lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. Lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. Amen. There may be others here this morning and you're backslidden. You're not living for the Lord like you once did. You're not living for the Lord like you promised him you would. And uh, maybe you're just one of those that the devil worked over and worked on and you got defeated and you got discouraged and you started going backwards. Well, the word says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I declare to you, without hesitation, that the mercies of God are new every morning. You have breath in your lungs. You have the ability to repent and to turn and to recommit your life to God. How many this morning would say, Pastor, that's me. I'm backslidden. I'm not living for the Lord like I once did, but I want to make it right. I want to turn my life around and I want to live for him from this day to my last day. If that's you, wherever you are, lift a hand up. Lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. For the sake of these that have lifted their hands. Yes, more coming up. Yes, thank you. For the sake of these who have raised their hands and and those who raised their hands on the first call, let's pray this prayer out loud together. Father God, I give you my life. Time's gone by. I did my own thing. I live for self. But today I turn my life around and I give you my life. I ask in the name of Jesus that you would forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Take out of my heart any bitterness, any anger, any unforgiveness, anything that might hinder me in my walk with you. And I thank you for not rejecting me, but for receiving me unto yourself and into your family. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. If you prayed that prayer after the service, see the kind folks out at guest services, and they would love to give you a copy of my book, God's Very Own Child. If you don't have a Bible, ask them for a Bible. We'll give you a Bible. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want all men and women that come under the sound of our voice, I want them to be free. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be prospered. I want your children to be blessed. Hallelujah.